So we just saw individual Canadians trying to help with the situation in Myanmar and Bangladesh. Does Canada, as a country, have any responsibility here? Fareed Khan is a volunteer with the National Council of Canadian Muslims. Andrew Bennett is a former Canadian ambassador for religious freedom. They're both in Ottawa tonight. So Fareed, I'll come to you in a moment, but Andrew, I just wanted to get your reaction. You've been to Myanmar, you established a couple of programs there to try and help with religious minority issues. What, what was your react, what is your reaction to what's happening? Well, I think just the, the tragedy of this humanitarian crisis is something that we all need to be very concerned about. Um, we're seeing upwards of 200,000 Rakhine Muslims, or Rohingya Muslims, uh, moving over into Bangladesh. And what we think is really concerning is that the, the government of Myanmar has shown a lack of genuine interest in trying to resolve this situation. The humanitarian crisis, Wendy, is one aspect of it. But this is something that could have been predicted, I think, uh, many years back. There is endemic uh, persecution of Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. Uh, there have been lots of um, signals for the last number of years that this type of thing could happen. And I think we need to be very concerned that Aung San Suu Kyi and the, the government of Myanmar have shown a relative lack of interest in trying to address this situation forthrightly. So, Fareed, Aung San Suu Kyi, she's a Nobel Prize winner. winner. She's one of six people given an extraordinary honor by Canada of being an honorary citizen. Um, you're now, uh, you've put forward a petition to try and have that status revoked. Why? Uh, why? Because I'm a human being. Uh, I'm a human being who refuses to uh, sit silent and not do something when there's such a tragedy occurring. And especially as a Canadian, uh, because Canada has a direct connection to uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, we gave her that uh, honorary Canadian citizenship. And when we gave that honor to her, um, in a speech in the House, I can't recall if it was the Prime Minister or the Foreign Minister at the time, said that she embodied the qualities of freedom, democracy, respect for human rights, and the rule of law. And I think what's going on in the ground, uh, on the ground in Myanmar um, demonstrate that that's no longer the case. And I think that uh, to continue to um, have have her hold that honor in the company of people like uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, the Dalai Lama, and Malala Yousafzai, our most recent uh, honoree with a, a Canadian citizenship. I think that uh, it diminishes all of their awards. And as a Canadian, uh, I can't uh, sit by and uh, let that stand. And I think the uh, more than 13,000 Canadians who've signed my petition, as well as other petitions on various other platforms, which adds to up to tens of thousands more, I think those Canadians think that the Canadian government should be taking action on this, not just symbolic action, but uh, forceful action that saves lives on the ground. Andrew, what do you think? Is that, is that the solution or part of the solution here, revoking the, uh, the citizenship? Well, I mean, I would applaud the, the grassroots initiative that, that Freed has launched, but I would agree with his second point in particular, that I think the Canadian government needs to really uh, take a stand on what is happening in Myanmar. And it's interesting that citizenship has become sort of the issue because in Myanmar, uh, Rohingya Muslims don't even have full Myanmari citizenship. Um, and this is, this is outrageous uh, when you think about it. We've got a, in Myanmar a state that is not unlike Canada in that it's multi-ethnic, it's multi-faith. Um, and so I think the Canadian example of uh, a multi-faith, multicultural country is one that, that Myanmar in this moment in their history where Aung San Suu Kyi and the people around her are trying to develop um, a genuinely, I would hope, uh, democratic country. Well, yeah, I mean, she is a, supposedly a beacon of freedom and democracy. How, how do you explain her position, which so far has been to not acknowledge the violence against, against them and to suggest that they're terrorists? Well, I think, I mean, there certainly have been some uh, extremist attacks. We can't, uh, we can't sort of put that aside. But um, this is, as I said before, is something that's been going on for a long time. And, and the fact that Aung San Suu Kyi has been silent on this uh, speaks to, I think, the power of a particular ethnic uh, Bamar nationalism that exists in, Bur that exists in Myanmar. Um, the, the majority of, of uh, Myanmar citizens are Buddhist. They're part of the Bamar ethnic uh, majority. And there is a particularly 
a sort of Buddhist ethnic nationalism that exists in Myanmar that has a rather closed view uh, to other minorities within the country, whether they be Rohingya Muslims, whether they be Chin or Kachin Christians. So, um, so this, is a, this is a concern if you want to build a generally pluralist country. So Fareed, you say you've got 13,000 people who have signed the petition. The, the Prime Minister has expressed concern about what's happening. He hasn't commented or not on the idea of revoking citizenship. Are, what do you plan to do with that petition? Well, I'm hoping uh, uh, I'm, it's continued to grow. And uh, there are grassroots efforts going on um, in not only in Ottawa but across the country to uh, express to the Prime Minister and the government um, the feelings that Canadians have that uh, Canada needs to take a very strong stand, not just uh, through our own actions here but also in the international community. Have you presented and the petition to the government? Not yet. I'm still waiting. Parliament hasn't resumed yet and I'm hoping that uh, within the next week or two uh, we will be able to do an event of some some sort where we can actually uh, present the petition um, through either someone from the PM's office or through an MP in the House of Commons. And I think that uh, the Prime Minister can't uh, ignore the voices of thousands of Canadians, not just the ones who've signed my petition, but the tens of thousands of Canadians who've signed other petitions on other platforms who are calling on the Canadian government to call uh, to take action on this, not just symbolically, but in a very concrete fashion uh, through our own means, as well as by working with international partners to make sure that uh, the Rohingya, Rohingya are safe and protected. Well, they we'll be watching. Thank you so much, Fareed, and, and to Andrew, and uh, see what happens with that petition. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Glenn. you very much.